Okay. Rise of the Tomb Raider, sequel to 2013's Tomb Raider game. Alessandro, you've been playing it, I haven't, you've been raving about it, I hate you, so tell me, sell me on this game. What's so great about Rise of the Tomb Raider? Rise of the Tomb Raider, in every sense of the word, is the perfect sequel. Um, in, in a lot of ways, when I was playing it, I kept thinking about Uncharted, because Uncharted 2, in a way, was, you know, the, the uh, springboard for Uncharted to be a global blockbuster. The first game in the Uncharted series was okay, it wasn't that great, but the second game really propelled it to new heights. Tomb Raider, on the other hand, had a really, really good reboot when Crystal Dynamics took over for the first time. And Rise of the Tomb Raider basically takes that and just makes it an Uncharted 2 of a really good reboot, which is almost impossible to think of when you think of, you know, the little room that Crystal Dynamics had to make a game better, but they have done that. Rise of the Tomb Raider is in every way a better game than their first Tomb Raider, and it is one of the best games you could possibly get on Xbox One right now. Now, I'm absolutely guilty of this, but I mean, I look back at the original Tomb Raider games and, you know, I was titillated by triangles. I bought these games. Lara Croft was this massive sex icon. Now I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit older. I'm a little bit wiser. I actually like having a character, and that's what I loved so much about that reboot was that Lara Croft was this vulnerable young person that had to grow into a role as an adventurer. But it was horrible. It was painful to watch. I mean, this was an actual person I was, you know, experiencing the game with. So, what's her evolution like as a character in this Tomb Raider sequel? It's actually really interesting because you would think that after a reboot like that, there would be very little growth left. So. In the original Tomb Raider, it was all about Lara uh, becoming the, you know, the Tomb Raider that we know her as, and, you know, kind of um, being introduced to these harsh environments and survival, you know, scenarios that she has to adapt to. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, she kind of has that knowledge, and she's kind of, um, you know, taken on this idea of becoming an archaeologist and a Tomb Raider and following in her father's footsteps. But she also has a really cool character arc in Rise of the Tomb Raider where she goes from being a really selfish, um, you know, self-centered kind of person to thinking about the bigger picture. So it's almost as if she starts realizing what type of ramifications her uh, work has. You know, if she finds um, uh, ancient pieces of, I don't know, magical things you know because everything in, in Tomb Raider is steeped in some sort of you know fantasy um, and what what type of impact these things that she finds has on the people around her and the world around her and it's a really really great arc to kind of see her go through go through this really good personal growth to understand that she has a personal responsibility to protect people from the things that she finds and also act as a last stand uh, against people who are hunting for these artifacts to use them for you know notorious means cool and um, if there's one thing i also enjoyed it was that there was this really great supporting cast and i think their, their supporting cast has expanded with the remnants uh, i believe that they, they basically all your yeah. eyes and ears in this new environment yeah so um the the only the only cast member you have returning from tomb raider is jonah uh, who's basically like Lara's mentor, her, you know, father in the wake of her actual father dying, stuff like that, and he's there, but the, the remnants are pretty much your supporting casts, um, especially their leader uh, named Jacob. He's a huge character in the game. Uh, he's got some really cool character moments as well, which I can't talk about because it would be really spoiling a lot of the best parts of Rise of the Tomb Raider's story, but they, I mean, in a sense, this is a very solitary game. For a lot of the time, you're just with Lara and she's put into these scenarios where she's cut off from everyone else and still alone. So it's still a very Lara-centric survival type of game. But when you do wander into these hubs, uh, there's like three hubs uh, where you wait Rise of the Tomb Raider almost turns into like an open world game. You you interact with people, you'll take on side missions from different remnants, uh, remnants um, and you'll just chat and like converse with them and understand their way of life and why they're in Sir, um, not Syria, Siberia protecting uh, the Divine and this legendary city of Katesh. And you've been raving about the, the uh, tombs in the sequel. I mean, you've been saying that they're just so much more challenging that you've really got to use every tool available to you in the game just to get through them. Yeah, they are really, really good. They've expanded them quite a bit, and um, I almost kind of compare them to 
Assassin's Creed 2's uh, tombs, you know the ones where Ezio had to go find those seals so you could unlock the really cool assassin armor. So the tombs in Rise of the Tomb Raider are very much like that. They're really, they're a bit small, they're self-contained puzzles, but they're really engrossing puzzles to take on. And they really make use of um, not only the tools that you have, but th using them in ways that you haven't used them yet in the main story, and you, you usually don't. So they offer up all sorts of new gameplay mechanics that are exclusive to those tombs and they're also really varied. I mean, in the original Tomb Raider, every tomb was in like this darkly lit cavern and you were messing with crates and setting things alight to kind of get things going. Each of these tombs has a story to it and that all kind of connects to the main story and the lore around this legendary city of Katesh and they all have a very different look and feel to them. So. You know, each tomb is memorable in a way, and going through, I think there's a total of nine of them, they're really, really good. Every time one popped up onto my map for me, you know, to go and do, that was like my first stop. Wow. Um, I'm seeing a big emphasis on stealth this time when it comes to combat and exploration behind enemy lines and all of that. I mean, how, how do you feel? Do you actually find yourself being a bit sneakier this time in Tomb Raider, or do you mm. prefer to just going guns blazing and just, you know, work out trial by fire and constant death, <laughs> which way to go? Um, you can definitely play it in any way you really want to, but there is a bigger emphasis emphasis on uh, stealth this time. So the way Lara is able to hide in bushes and hide in um, uh, small ponds and basically take out enemies quite uh, sneakily, you know, from these uh, hiding spaces. You also have uh, these, this instinct mode. So if you click in the right stick, um, you know, points of interest get highlighted for a brief second and you can actually see enemies in red and orange. And orange means that they're currently not in view of other enemies so you can safely take them out without being detected and red is, you know, the exact opposite. So there's a lot of tools to cut kind of keep you stealthy your bow is a huge part of that as well because it is a silent weapon but when things do go a bit pear-shaped and you do get spotted which happens a lot of the time um rise of the tomb raider is a far better shooter than it was when crystal dynamics first did the reboot uh, the aiming isn't as floaty uh, the weapons are quite varied and you know switching from a bolt action rifle to a more rapid fire submachine gun is a better in certain scenarios so there's a lot of depth to it and i found the combat a lot better this time around the cover system is really good because you don't snap into it it's just kind of like really dynamic the only gripe i have is the melee system it's still it's weird it your hits often don't connect um you know kind of stringing up combos is a bit difficult and it's it, it just feels weird and the camera just kind of loses itself when you're you know, hitting B to dodge around an enemy and then hit them, it kind of like loses where you are and you don't really know who you are. So melee, you know, the melee system is not fantastic yet. It could be better, but everything else is improved, basically. And there's also the environment from what I've seen. I mean, you can take down enemies using your environment around you. It looks quite brutal. Yeah, basically, you've got these scenarios where, I mean, um, in certain temples, there's uh, urns of fire that you can use to, you know, blow up and kill enemies. You can uh, have wildlife actually take out your enemies as well. Um, you can hit them off cliffs. You can do, you know, the, the environment is Lara's weapon as much as it is her her burden as well because she's also surviving in there. So, you know, it it's just another mechanic to kind of learn and use as you play. But in terms of how much it's used, it's not really presented to you in a way of, okay, here's this ledge, you should pull it out to kill the three enemies above it. You're given that kind of choice. And a lot of the times I missed, you know, opportunities opportunities like that and just went for straight kills. So it's cool, it's cool. But it's it's also the, the environmental stuff plays into a lot of the, um, the upgrade trees and the customization that Lara has, you know, hunting animals, uh, picking up resources to make arrows, picking up resources to craft new weapons, stuff like that. So it's a huge system that's just been expanded upon from the last game. Okay, so a huge game, mostly improves gameplay, better storyline, better character by the sounds of things. How does it look? How does it handle in the visuals department, in your opinion? It is one of the most it is one of the most gorgeous games I've played all year. It, from the moment you start the game, you start the game in uh, Siberia in these snow-capped mountains. I mean, I just let the game stand there for a few seconds because I couldn't believe that it wasn't a you know pre-rendered cutscene. It was gameplay. I was moving as Lara. I was busy climbing as Lara, and it was just phenomenal. Really, really good. And it kind of keeps that visual consistency throughout. Uh, 
it looks it looks phenomenal. It's even better when you're when you're in like darkly lit caverns and Lara like cracks um, a little like Lumo stick or something. Just the lighting with the way everything bounces off water and it just warms up the screen. It's it's gorgeous. It's really good. So this sounds like the actual system seller of the Xbox One, not Halo 5 Guardians. Which is confusing because it's not really an exclusive. I mean, Rise of Tomb Raider is exclusive for the next four months to to Xbox One and then it comes out on PC and it's a console exclusive for the next year. So, I mean, in that regard, being a, an exclusive for a year is a big deal. So you could think of it as, as an exclusive for that long. And I'm very curious to see because the story hints at, at, at a sequel. Custo Dynamics and Square Enix obviously have a plan for where they want to take Lara next. and. To me, it seems like this could become a very lucrative deal between them and Microsoft. So I wonder if this is just a precursor to something being a bit more concrete in the future, because it certainly seems to work for both parties involved. Ooh, the fanboys, they are going to rage if that happens. <laughs> okay, so Rise of the Tomb Raider is out on Xbox platforms for the next couple of months at least, exclusive to them. Uh, it sounds like it's one of your games of the year. Yeah, it's definitely up there in my top three games of the year so far. Um, it's it's easily the best action game I've played in a long, long time. And like I said at the beginning, this is the Uncharted 2 of the Tomb Raider franchise. And, you know, no matter what you think about Uncharted 2, that game is known for, S, uh, you know, elevating Uncharted to a level where it is now the premier uh, Sony system seller that it is. Rise of the Tomb Raider does that. For Lara Croft and in many regards this is a better game than any Uncharted has ever been because it's got better combat, it's got more dynamic climbing, it's got you know more relatable characters, it's got a more realistic story and it's just really really fun to play. 